This is Real to Real Podcast. Real stories, real sports. And here's your host, Wu Bay Gabre. Welcome to season three as we continue this season. And again, it keeps getting bigger and better. Uh, we have an uh, award winning journalist um, from ESPN. He's a native of Norfolk, Virginia. He's an ODU graduate, 30 years of experience in television and radio. Why you got to go to 30 years? Why do you got to say that? I'm sorry. Hey, it's it a fun me, fact, though, right? It makes me sound old. That, the great. <laughs> Top of my head. He was a keynote speaker <laughs> for the 100th commencement ceremony at his alma mater, Old Dominion. He uh, earned an Emmy for his ESPN Sports Center journalist, uh, artistic prowess, and his, his great career. And it's just an honor to have not only a sports journalist, but an, uh, an ODU alum like myself who's done uh, great things in his career, man. It's just an honor to have Mr. Jay Harris on the show. Jay, I know you're busy, and we uh, we finally got together, man, and, and got this done, and I really appreciate this, man. It is an honor to be here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Talk to me about growing up in Chapel Hill. I mean, it's a college town. UNC's there. Uh, what was it like to grow up in, in that part of the country? Uh, I didn't get to see a lot of, uni- of the university because – you know, I lived out in the country mm-hmm. and I had no transportation to get downtown to Franklin Street to hang out with all the people. Yeah, Franklin Street. I've heard about that. <laughs> yes. And the few times that there was a real, you know, a time to hang out on Franklin Street, like when when we um we when UNC uh, won the national title, I think it was 1982. Mm-hmm, and I asked my mom if I could go down to Franklin Street and hang out with college kids, me being a junior in high school, she was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't let me go. Um, and she was probably right. I probably didn't need to be down there. But I didn't, I didn't get to to hang out a lot on campus. So, I mean, when I got older, you know, I go play basketball mm-hmm. um, at the uh, Woolen Gym there on campus and Granville Towers, which used to be the basketball court, uh, the place where all the athletes stayed. Right. Now I believe it's Target and some other stuff because Chapel Hill's changed a lot. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, you came back to Norfolk. You said you were born in Norfolk. Um, I know, I know I read where your dad was a huge, uh, influence, um, in the neighborhood park place neighborhood down there, not far from the campus. But what was your decision to come back to Norfolk where you were born to go to Old Dominion? Him. Right. My parents were divorced and, uh, I wanted to hang out with my dad for a while and, you know, get to know this dude a little bit better. And I, I, I went to Norfolk state was cool. Mm-hmm. My mom went to Hampton, so I, I didn't want to go to Hampton, although I ended up basically finishing at Hampton with my communications degree. My 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 television practicum was at Hampton at the time. Hampton had a big, nice studio before ODU got theirs. Oh, yeah. And ODU reminded me of my high school. Uh, I felt comfortable. And I went to preview, made some friends that I still have today. And, and you know, I never regretted uh, choosing to become a monarch. And I stayed with my dad and, you know, I never regretted that decision either. That was, that was probably the best decision I ever made. When you got there, um, when did your, your love for journalism, was it before you got to Old Dominion or when oh, you I was got, way before. was it? Okay. Yeah. I decided in the 11th grade, okay. I took one of those career tests to see, you know, where my aptitudes were or my aptitude was. And I scored well in the area of interpersonal skills and I looked at the jobs. And I think journalists may have been the third one listed. Right. And I said, okay, that's what I'll be. I was on the the yearbook staff at the time and I like to write and tell stories. And I was, I was always the kid in class who was never afraid to get up and, and do a speech or do whatever and talk. And it didn't scare me to talk in front of people. Um, so it was, seemed like the right career choice for me. Um, did you, did you get into sports there? Did you go to a lot of games? Did you do any? I think it was WODU around. That's where I started. WODU was any kind of radio or, or or the newspaper around for you to start. I started at WODU. I didn't do any Mason Crown. Mason Crown. Um, yeah. Most was WODU, and uh, that was you know in a DJ capacity. Um, nothing reporting wise, like I, I like I went on to do for a living, but you know it got my feet a little bit wet, a little bit because you know you could only hear WODU. In, in web center and maybe maybe, maybe maybe one dorm right <laughs> yes i remember that and when i was there too yeah. um 
So you started in radio and uh, um, a mutual, um, another guy that I called about you who had great things to say about you was Don Roberts. Was, was, yeah. that, was your, that was your first gig, right? Out of college? Um, I sent, That was my first media Media job. gig, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I was at DC okay. doing a telemarketing job and um, I didn't want to do that anymore. One of my friends up there inspired me because she quit the job where we were working at MCI and she moved to Chicago because she wanted to become the next Oprah. She was a communications <laughs> friend also. Right, right. She went, she went to Towson okay. and she inspired me to, you know, pursue what I really, really wanted to do. And I met Don when I was in college and uh, we're in the same fraternity right. and I called him up and I said, hey, I, I, I want to do what I don't want to do this. I want to do what you're doing. Can you can you help me out? And he said, I can give you plenty of experience, but I can't pay you any money. Right. And I was making sixteen thousand dollars a year at MCI. And I, yeah. I, I got together with my mom and dad and I told them what I wanted to do. And I said, but I, I, I'd be making zero. Um, and they're like, but this is this really what you want to do? Do you think this would help you? And I was like, doing it? Absolutely. I, I, I do. That's what Don said. He said, give me plenty of experience. Yeah. And and they're like, OK, mainly it was my dad because I would end up moving back to Norfolk and okay. back into the house right. with him. And he said, come on back right. and, you know, handle your business. So that's what I did. So you did that for a little while. And then you you, you got a call to go to Pittsburgh, right? Um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Is that where your radio career basically started? That is that was my my first full time paying gig okay. in the media was right. when was when um, I got the Pittsburgh job. And I got it because I had done a lot of stories for the Sheridan Broadcasting Network. Right. Uh, then changed to the American Urban Radio Networks at the time, the largest black owned radio network in the country. Nice. I did a lot of uh, stories. In, I think it was 88, the uh, Labor Fest slash Greek Fest riots ah, at Virginia Beach. The infamous riots. Yeah. Yes. And I I, I happened to have a, like a part time because I wasn't making any money right. uh, at WREP and at W at WOWI, W-O-W-I. I was essentially part time. And I had another part time gig at a record store. Wow. Like right at the waterfront. So I had a bird's eye view of everything and I would right see there. it. Yeah. I would get my recorder out. I would file stories on the phone uh, back to Don. And I'd also file stories for, for Sheridan. And um, I just, you know, inquired about jobs one day and they happened to be moving a guy off the local desk and onto the national desk. Mm. And they had a local opening and I inquired about it and they flew me up. And uh, my soon to be boss said, well, the job's yours if you want it. <laughs> I'll take it. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's how it happened. When did uh, when did ESPN uh, start? You know, uh, did you did you have it? Was that your goal to, hmm. to get to ESPN? I mean, hmm. when, when did ESPN start becoming a factor and, and you accepted that? that, that never. There? ESPN, never. Never. I mean, <laughs> really? It, no. I mean, once I got into news. Um, radio news in Pittsburgh, and then I moved over to television news. I mean, I, I was all in on the news side. Uh, it's all journalism, which, you know, I, I, I should have known then, as I tell you my ESPN story, but I was, you know, I was all, I had this news tunnel vision. Right, right. And there was a gentleman by the name of Fred Brown. He's no longer with us. Um, he was my boss at the, uh, at the radio network. And he left for a job at ESPN Radio, and we kept in touch. And at the end of my TV contract, I'd work my way up from doing radio, radio to local TV news, from general assignment reporter to weekend anchor to main anchor at the Fox station there. And at the end of my contract, I sent Fred a tape. I wanted him to critique it. And, and he looked at it, and he called me up, and he said, hey, man, uh, tape is good. They really liked it. And I said, wow. who is that? And he said, the folks here at ESPN, that he had, he had moved from ESPN radio to the re, the recruiting department. Right. So it was his job to bring people in. He's like, yeah, I, they like your tape. And I'm like, why did you show them my tape? I, <laughs> I, I do news. I, I don't do sports. So, well, he's like, well, whatever you do, they like, and they, they want you to come up for an audition. And my, my wife was listening. Uh, and, you know, she he, she knew Fred because he was a family friend, Fred right. and his wife and daughter, daughters. And um, she was like, well, you watch ESPN all the time. Why don't you just go? Mm -hmm. So I said, well, fine, I'll just go. And I went and they were bringing in five, five people. 
and I was the third person they saw. And I, you know, I never done sports before. I was a sports fan. Right. Um, but writing and telling a story, it is all the same. All the it's same. the subject matter is different. It is. I never done a highlight before. So wow. I just kind of I just kind of had fun with with my highlight. And and I interviewed with what seemed like 1500 people that day, office to office, talking about me and ESPN. And I went back to Pittsburgh. And I honestly didn't think much of it. And Fred called me a couple of days later and said, they, they love you. They wow. want to hire you. And I said, Fred, I appreciate it. But, I, you know. I don't want to work at ESPN. <laughs> he turned it. Oh, wow. Okay. No, because I mean, I was in, I, I was in news mode. I was right. thinking right. good morning, right. America, the today show that, that was my, that was my career goal at the time. That's right. where I was. I said, I don't, I, I don't want to do sports. He said, cool. No problem. If there's anything I can do to help you, I, 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 let me know. I said, cool, fine. He called me back. I may have been the next day. They really, really want to hire you. I said, well, tell me about the job. Tell me about the job. ESPN news nights and weekends and all the stuff. And I said, well, friend, how much does it pay? <laughs> and he gave me the range. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'm, I'm in that range now. Um, okay. And I don't know, bro. Um, move, I still don't know if I want to change careers. I think I was 38 at the time. Wow. I don't know. And the boy, he was three. I don't know if I would, my wife, her dad was in the military and I don't, I know I don't want to move her around. Yeah. We've been in Pittsburgh for 12 years. We were kind of settled. And it, the winters are really cold in Connecticut. Like the winters weren't really cold in Pittsburgh. Um, so <laughs> I, I said, you know, I appreciate it, but I, I don't think so. I don't I think, think I'm going to do that. Yeah. He said, no problem. No problem. Uh, unbeknownst to me, mm -hmm. my wife called Fred and she's like. <laughs> Behind your back, huh? Yes. Yes. Oh, man. It, just nosy. Oh, the, phone, <laughs> the phone is dead. See, that's her right now. I bet. No, it's not. That's a spam call. Let me oh, fix yeah, that. Okay, okay. Edit this up. Yeah. All right. So she said, is this, a, is this a good opportunity for Jay? And he said, yeah, I, I really think it is. And she said, okay, I'll take care of it. And bye-bye. Mm. Tell, you know, tell Sarah and Makeda. I said, hello. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> and while she was doing that, my agent was like, you know, Maybe we should, you know, just throw a number at them just, just to see where they are. And I said, you're fine. You can do what you want to. Go ahead, do it. And he did. And they didn't meet it, but they got close. Close. And he said, we should think about this. Okay. So, all right, I think about it. I think about it. All right, think about it. They want an answer by Friday. If you say no, they want to move on to somebody else. Okay. All right. I'll think about it. And I thought about it. I said, okay. He says, y'all keep pressuring me. You think this is such a great thing. Fine. We'll go. I like ESPN. It's not really what I wanted to do, but everybody thinks it's a great thing. All right, we'll go. Great. We're going to go. Going to go to ESPN. Call them up. Call Fred. We're coming to Bristol. Great. They made their announcement and everything. Went to bed that night. Woke up the next morning. I'm not going. <laughs> oh my I don't want to go. Oh, man. I was stupid. Um, <laughs> so the wife gets out the legal pad oh. and line down the middle, pros and cons and the right. health, health benefits. And the Disney benefits alone I totally made it I'm sure. the best decision that she made because I'd I'd probably said no again, and I don't know where I'd be right now to be honest with you because my little TV my little TV station, um, the owners uh, shuttered the station about a year later. Wow! Yeah, they never replaced me on the anchor desk. Uh, wow. They went solo anchor after that, and a year later they they're like, yeah, we're done here. And uh, that was it. So some somebody was looking out for your boy. You know, when it. your boy when your boy was blind and had no oh. clue. Another uh, tale of this story is listen to the wife when when they're trying to tell you something. Whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Okay. But no, but no, but was it was it was it because <laughs> what what were you re reluctant to? Was it was it just because of a new career? Was it just sport? You were comfortable where you were? Or, or what was all it? all of that, right. all of that, all of that was it? it yeah. Yeah. All of that. And honestly, part of it probably also was fear, right? Yeah. I mean, to be. I'm going to ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Yes, that's right. And I like sports and I was a fan. Um, but I I wasn't when I got there, like I wasn't an encyclopedia. Like right, I would do right. shows with these researchers, and I still do that can recall things like oh, man, that. Amazing. And if they couldn't recall it, they could find it like yes. that. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Where am I with these sports <laughs> savants? And, yeah, man. and how how am I gonna survive here? 
And it literally took me about a year. And my friend Pam Ward, Pam Ward um, yeah. who who you you see her doing a lot of you know, yeah. women's sports, announcing a lot of women's sports. I met her. I, I met her in the makeup room one day, and she was talking about somebody in college football. And I said, how, "Pam, how 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 do you know that?" And she said, "Oh, it'll trust me. It'll be like osmosis. Give yourself, go through a year, <laughs> and you'll go through every sport. And once you yep. come back around." it'll be comfortable again. You'll recognize some of the names and some of the teams and blah, blah, blah. And you'll keep doing that. And you, you, you do your own studying, the, whatever you do. And it'll it'll be osmosis. And she was absolutely right. That's exactly the way it rolled. So I was just, I was scared. Yeah. I didn't know what to expect. And um, I was older and a bunch of young cats. And, now, you know. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Um by you being older, a lot of a lot of a lot of young students that I talk to, or you know how it is now, they're just like, I want to get there right away. Did mm -hmm. it help you that you were older and you had a chance to have more experience before you went to ESPN rather than going early on before maybe even right after Pittsburgh? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because whatever they saw in me that mm -hmm. I didn't see, exactly, exactly, um, was that experience and all the stuff that I had done. Right. I mean, I could write a story. I could tell a story. I could sit on the set. Most most local sports guys get what two minutes. Yeah. And I was doing an hour show every night, and I would do two three hour shows on ESPN News and now Sports Center. It could be uh, the six o'clock show. I could do an hour or the yeah. noon or Saturday morning. Do two or three hours. Right. So sitting on the set for that long is no big deal. So that was I think that was part of it too. But I could tell a story, man. I could do all the I could do all the mechanics of journalism. I just had to learn new subject matter. That's all. They saw that before I saw that. And once I finally saw it, I felt pretty dumb, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> no. Like, why were you being so afraid? You that was really dumb. You, 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 you had that skill. You. you had that skill. Uh, I meant I, I forgot to mention um, you moved back to Chapel Hill. And I want everybody to hear this. Oh, God. A group called After Six. I read about this. It is so yeah. interesting, intriguing to me. That's my band. Um, Talk about that. You know, you 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 you're in sports now. You were doing news, but you actually have a music background. Mm -hmm. um, you moved back to Chapel Hill to pursue music. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, that was my band in high school. After yeah. six, I played bass. Right. Um, and when, I remember we played this gig in Durham, um, and they announced this like the, the best band mm. in North Carolina, mm. and we were like, "Who else is here?" <laughs> <laughs> So we're there. Somebody else playing it. Oh, yeah. us. Oh, a, okay. wow. Because wow. we were pretty good. We were yeah. decent. And, you know, we were going to do the original thing, write some songs, cut a record. We went in the studio. We did something. But, you know, right. it didn't pan out. Right. And right. It, it I, you know, and then it was time to get a real job. We tried for a real job. That's how it is. Um, it's It was a lot different when, when I was coming up and, and when you were coming up, too, in terms of the African-American did you see on TV? What What do you think about that now? You see a lot more of, of females and African Americans telling their stories um, to the public. Uh, how do you feel about how that's changed since you since you started? Um, there's a lot more um, diversity, yeah, on the screen and behind the microphone than there was um, when I was when I was yeah, young, for sure. Um, it, which is fantastic. It is. Yeah. And people will tell me all the time. We, you know, we're, we're proud of you. We're happy that you see, to see you there and, and representing and representing well. And that means, that means a lot I'm to sure. me. I'm sure. Right? I mean, when I, when I drive on campus and I see those four letters, there's a lot of history and heritage behind those four letters. Absolutely. So, so that's enough to make me want to, you know, straighten up and fly right and have my stuff buttoned up when I go in the air and make sure that I represent well that's for cool. ESPN and the people that love ESPN. And, but it's an extra it's an extra special layer of privilege for for the black and brown folks who say we're 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 proud of you and and we we love seeing you there. That's that's I like that. I like that a lot. That's a huge influence. And like even me as a as a journalist watching you, man, knowing you're an old old Dominion grad too, man. It's it meant a lot to us, man. Um, I'm not gonna hold you up. We're gonna go to this last segment. I call this keeping it real. I just throw a few. Quick hitters at you, and the first thing that comes to your mind, you just throw it back. Have some fun okay. with it. You ready? I'm ready. Your Mount Trash, your Mount Rushmore. Use that Mount Trashmore. You I'm about to see. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking seven five seven. Look at <laughs> your Mount Rushmore of, of journalists. 
like in terms of, of journalists that you looked up to and that you put um, at the top of that list? Whether it's sports now, like before or when? just yeah, before. Oh shucks. Okay. Before. Um Peter Jennings. Absolutely. Bryant Gumble. Yep. Bob Lee. Ooh, forgot about Bob Lee. Bob Lee. He's a man, yeah. yes. Uh and it will probably be a tie. Okay. For the last spot, it'd be either Charlie Gaddy or Tom Souter. They were okay. on WRAL when I was growing up in, in Chapel Hill. Charlie Gaddy did news. Tom Souter did sports. And, you know, I'd, I'd watch that station all the time and, and watch them. But that's probably would be my Mount Rushmore that's from way back in the day. It would probably a, change now if I if I went from now. I know it would good, change. That's a good one, man. That's a good one, though. And it's Mount Rushmore, not Mount Trashmore. Everybody who's Mount, <laughs> everybody's listening who don't, who don't know what Mount Trashmore, it's a park in Virginia Beach that used to be a, a city dump, and now it's a park. So I, I'm already thinking 757. Uh, your best ODU sports memory or moment, just based uh, on, um, yeah. Uh, when I was in school, I believe okay. it was 86. Okay. And we went to the tournament, men's basketball. Mm -hmm. We beat West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And then we lost to Duke in that next game. Wow. And that was the year Duke lost to Louisville in, oh, the, uh, in the final game. Yeah, Jay Billis. Jay, Jay I was going to say Jay Billis. Do, yeah, do you, do, yeah. So when I see him, I remind him how much I hate him. <laughs> 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 because they beat ODU when I was in college and and it made me mad. So that's probably the one that, that, that comes to mind. Yep, Although Jay. there have been several. Oh, it's like, been a few lately. There, there's been um shucks. Watching watching Tisha Pinachero and, and Mary Andrade and that that's group. when I that's when I was there in the mid nineties. Oh my god, it was it was amazing. Yeah. 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 yeah Tisha that. Tisha was 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 all that. That's my um, buddy. we we mentioned your musical career and I got I got it. This will be interesting to hear. Give me an album that you can listen to with no skips since you, you have a musical background. What's that one album you listen to? You don't have to skip at all. Uh Probably any Prince album. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, um, Sound of the Times. Yeah, Purple Rain. All of them. You can let that run. You can let that yeah. run all day. <laughs> yeah, I, that, that's where I'd start with Prince. No skips all right. at all. That's awesome. The next one will be Midnight Marauders by Tribe Called Quest. Thank you. That's yeah. mine. Midnight Marauders are low end theory. I got to go with those too. Um, your most impactful story that you've done in your career. Hmm. There was a story that my photographer and I did when we were in Pittsburgh. Okay. Um, it was a story. Every, every it wasn't an exclusive. Everybody had the story. Um, there was this new technology that identified the the dead remains, like war dead, okay. and her um, loved one was identified, and they were bringing the remains back. And everybody had the story, and and went to her, and got interviews, and 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 took some pictures, and they left. But since we were the ten o'clock news, we had extra time. Right. So we talked to her more. Uh, she brought out this, like mementos and medals and flags and stuff and newspaper clippings. And it was really cool. And my photographer shot it, lit it and shot it real nice and pretty. And we told a real good story. I mean, we wrote this story together, driving in the in the in the truck, going the way back to the station. And we put it on that night and it was it was fabulous. And she wrote us a letter. Uh, telling us how much she enjoyed it. And appreciated the care that we took with her memories and her family and that always stood out to me because people yeah. you know they take the time they'll fire off a letter and an email or whatever tell you how much you suck and how much they hate you. <laughs> yeah you know that yeah, but for someone to take the time to tell you that you did something that they appreciated and they like that that one always sticks with me yeah that's that and, I, and that goes back to your pittsburgh days too so that that probably yeah. means a lot more too last question for you jay again i appreciate your time man um you, you alluded to it a little bit earlier but I know things are different now with, with social media and how people are getting getting uh, these 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 uh, journalist gigs. But what's some of the advice that you you hang your hat on and put in your back pocket when young journalists ask you for that that advice or that encouragement that you, that you're looking for? I tell them to follow their passion. Mm -hmm. um, if they really really want to do this, if they're passionate about it, then go for it. Don't think about the money. Don't think about all. Just follow. Just follow your passion in the business. And I also tell them be a journalist. Thank you. I want to be a sports this, or I want to be a news that. No, you Thank don't. You. 
Yeah. I want you to be a journalist. I want you to be a storyteller. Be a storyteller. That's what you are. Because then you could pick any subject. It doesn't matter. I could hand you this bottle of sanitizer. And you can tell me a story about this bottle of sanitizer if you're a storyteller. Exactly. If you limit yourself to sports, awesome. it might be difficult. So you don't put any limits on yourself. Be a storyteller. Be a journalist, a true journalist. And that will that will carry you through. Learn how to ask good questions. Be curious. Good open-ended questions. No yes, yes or no questions. Right. Um, you know, all the thing, all the foundational things right. that you learn in the beginning that people go, ah, just tell me the secret to being a good. No, there's no secret. Right. Those things are the secret. That foundation is the secret. That's what you need to do. And that will carry you through. Forget all the flash in the pan. I've got a million followers. I don't give a damn. Can you tell me a story? <laughs> Seriously. If you, I mean, you can't, if you can't, anybody, people, <laughs> people all the time like to, you know, clown us on social media. Ah, you're, you're, you're horrible. You, I could come do sports center. Come on. Yeah, do it. Come sit do in the it. chair. I'll meet you at the door. I'll show you exactly what to do. I'll take you to lunch. Anything you eat. Yeah, come on and do it. You think it's so easy because it's, yeah, it's not. not easy at all, at all, at all. But if you have a foundation, you might have a shot. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this one last question off script though. Um, like like my goal, my ultimate goal was to get to Sports Center. What about people who who don't make it to that level, but they're still successful? Like a lot of them might not make it to ESPN mm -hmm. or CBS Sports or wherever else that, that their aspirations, but they're still successful, and a lot of them look down on themselves and say, I never made it to that, but you're still successful. You're just not successful at that level that you want to get to, but you can still do what you want to do where you are. And success is relative. Thank you. Thank if you. If you're happy, I have many friends, who, you know, had these goals and these yep. desires, yep. but went to a city or whatever. And, you know, maybe met somebody and started a family and mm -hmm. loved the community and decided to stay there. And that's great. You and then you're successful. You're successful. Yeah. And you know, a, a lot of them probably make more money than I do. Maybe. I mean, yeah. so it is, uh, it is, it is success is relative. Right. Are you happy? Yeah. You having a good time? Is it, do you have a job that you get to do? Exactly. Instead of have to do. That's it. Then you're successful. Doesn't matter where you are. Yep. That's so true. Jay, man, I appreciate you, man. We finally got it done and I know you're busy and thanks for fitting me in, man. I really appreciate you stopping by all day. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Old Dominion, uh, you know, we got to try to get some teams in the tournament and some, maybe get the football team back. But it's always going to be love down there on Hampton Boulevard. I appreciate you, man. Always, brother. Take care. Take it Thank easy, you. man. Thank you so much. Peace. All right.